Hello YouTube. So today I'm going to show you how to render your drum MIDI programming down to separate audio tracks. So we're going to go from this to this. Alright, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to separate your uh, your MIDI data according to their samples and in Groove Agent each sample is assigned to our particular pitch so essentially what we're doing is we're separating our MIDI data according to pitch and you can see each individual pitch has a different sample attached to it so to do that you highlight the events that you're trying to uh, render in place you hit the control or shift and right click on the mouse go down to MIDI and dissolve part that's the technical term is we're dissolving the part and you have the option to do it by channel or by pitches and in this case we only have the option here to do by pitch but that's exactly what we want um, you do not want to do dissolve to lanes because you cannot render in place from lanes into separate tracks I think you can do render in place down to a stereo track but that's not what we're trying to do so uncheck that and then uncheck the optimized display or at least I like to do that because if you have that enabled sometimes the new events uh, get resized and that kind of just bothers me uh, so I leave that unchecked then you hit the OK button alright so now we have a separate MIDI track for each individual sample so now we can go ahead and render in place. So highlight the events you're trying to render. Go to the edit menu and render in place. And if you know for sure that you have the render settings that you want to use, then go ahead and click the render with the current settings. If not, then configure those settings. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I configure it. Um, so this drop down menu here, don't worry too much about these. Uh, I read the manual and these are essentially the same thing. I just leave it as separate events. Um, the smaller the event and less like gluing together, the better, I think. Next thing is in this section here, you have the ability to select how the uh, signal path is processed. So you can have it dry with no track effects or anything. Uh, you can have it render with the channel settings so like when you hover over here you can see it includes insert effects EQ channel strip and that kind of stuff and you even have the ability to have the master effects as well as the, the complete uh, signal path I like to just keep it on dry and the reason is because I don't really use processing with all my MIDI data uh, I like to do all of my processing and mixing and all that sort of tweaky stuff uh, once I'm in the mixing process so not when I'm uh, in the production process like I am here so I keep it dry um, the next thing is tail size this is pretty important when you're rendering from MIDI data uh, and it's more important when you're doing more like complete effects processing and all that kind of stuff because let's say you had a snare that had a, a um, like a reverb on it and there's a nice big long tail to the reverb uh, your MIDI data here on the snare is only so long and it's going to cut off the rendering according to that MIDI data so it could cut off a little too early before the uh, end of that reverb tail is actually finished so adding a tail size will guarantee that there's more time being rendered uh, and so that you will include the, uh, the, re the reverb tail in that rendering. So I like to do somewhere around like one, one full bar or like a second or th up to three seconds or something. Um, I also like to keep every, of like all of my audio at 24 bit. That's kind of just the standard. Um, then I'm not converting at any point in the stage. Uh, so I keep it there. And the other thing is I like to keep this at um, mute source events because once I've converted these MIDI events into audio events I no longer want to hear those MIDI events I don't want them triggering so having it having Cubase mute it on its own is perfect 
So now hit the render button and this is going to take uh, just a little while but once it's finished I'll uh, explain a few things. Alright so now we have all of our audio events and our audio tracks everything's rendered and all of the uh, samples are separated so that's totally perfect. Um, I'm just going to show you what happened at the end of these events. So we told uh, Cubase to render an extra beat to these uh, events. So an extra beat than what these MIDI events are. So it did just that. Let's enlarge the, uh, the, the waveforms. You could see that the kick drum, the sample was not cut off because we gave that extra amount of rendering time. But some of these other uh, samples were actually cut off. So I would go ahead and I would go back and re-render these with a longer tail size so that those samples don't get cut off. Okay, so that's the basics of rendering audio from MIDI events. But let's say you have a more complicated situation like I have in this session here, is for my percussion, I have essentially all of this MIDI data here. There's a bunch of different samples, but it's really only three different kinds of samples. There's shakers, hand drums, and uh, claps. And all I need really is three different stereo audio tracks uh, according to the type of samples. So I don't need each individual sample to have their own audio track. So first I can either group all the like, like kind of MIDI data together and then render that down into to audio or I can render all the individual samples down to audio and then group the like audio together. Uh, and I'm going to group the MIDI data down to a to three groups, the shakers, the hand drums, and the claps. And then from there, I'm going to render down to audio. Okay, so like we did before, we highlight the events here uh, and then control or shift and then right click the mouse and down to the MIDI menu here. Um, and actually just to point out, the same menu is up here. So highlight the parts, click the MIDI, uh, and here's dissolve part. Do that. And here I just want to demonstrate is we have the option to separate by channels. So let's click that. And somewhere down the line, Cubase has decided that these two groups of MIDI, so this here, these are two different uh, samples of shakers. It has decided that that's a separate channel from all the rest of the MIDI. Um, but unfortunately, uh, there's also claps in here. Uh, it's mostly hand drums, but there's also shakers in here as well. So we're going to uh, dissolve these parts as well. Now, here Cubis has assigned this to a separate channel, and I don't exactly know why, but we're going to put that back down to two because we want all of this stuff to trigger Hallion just as if uh, we didn't dissolve the parts. And if it was on three, and then I rendered to place, uh, it wouldn't be triggering Halion, and therefore it would not render any audio. It would render blank. So we want to keep that on two, and then, like I said, we're going to go ahead and dissolve these parts as well. Here's the shakers. Now we got to find the last two shakers. That's hand drum, hand drum. There's a shaker. Hand drum. There's a clap. That's going to the bottom. That's a hand drum. There's the last shaker. So there we go. Let's just double check that all of these here. Mm, like this. These are all hand drums, and oh, okay, there we go. So this was hand drum, so we'll keep that separate. So now what I do is I group the like kind of samples together, or I group the MIDI data, the MIDI events together. Now this is all of the shakers. 
uh, take all of these, put them on the same track, making sure they're at the same spot like that. And now what we can do is render these in place. So highlight these MIDI events and because I've already configured the render in place settings, I can use this render with current settings. And you can see here that I have a keyboard shortcut and I'm going to use that. So there you have it. We have some more audio events. These are my percussion. Let's just enlarge this because it looks like this one had nothing, but this is all the shakers. It's just really, really small. Um, so now I can go ahead and delete these empty channels. Remove. Oops. Remove that. I could even go and delete all these extra MIDI channels. Now I have this main percussion channel uh, and just audio tracks and I can even again go to here and delete all this extra channel stuff here. Now what we have is a clean uh, Cubase project with essentially only audio playback all this MIDI stuff is not being triggered and using up CPU and we know that this project is rock solid it's separated by the uh, the different samples so we can go ahead and mix all of these individual samples uh, appropriately we can do all the processing that we want uh, it's essentially ready for mixing so this is what I would do when I'm done all my production have finished all of my MIDI programming and all that stuff I'd bounce it down to this. I'd have just basic MIDI stuff, but it would be muted in the background. I could even power down these uh, rack instruments or VST instruments. Um, and then all I'm playing is audio tracks. I can route that stuff through my mixer and do all my necessary uh, mixing and bounce all that stuff down to a recorded print track. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, just to kind of further demonstrate is I can go here and name these tracks and if I hit shift enter Then it renames the track as well as the event and I would do that before I start mixing because otherwise I'm I'm looking at this and this is Complicated it's kind of messing with me right now So I'd figure out what all these things are rename them and then I would proceed with mixing So I hope you find this useful. I know I I'm starting to use this sort of method uh, by rendering in place from MIDI uh, a lot more often because it's now a part of uh, Cubase Pro 8. This is an added feature. Now I'm starting to use this in my sort of project workflow uh, and it's producing good results. I like working this way, starting with MIDI, making my entire project MIDI. Uh, I can arrange everything in MIDI. And then when I'm completely done my project, bounce and render everything down to audio. And then I can mix in just pure audio. And then I'm essentially good to go. Um, so yeah, hopefully you like that. Leave a like if you did. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you like seeing videos like this. And maybe just leave a comment down below uh, if you have any questions or suggestions of any similar kind of video to make. Um, yeah, so anyways, see you in the next video, and bye-bye.